Hello everybody and welcome to What Culture Gaming. I'm Ben from What Culture Gaming. <laughs> Scott from What Culture Gaming. Destiny 2, that came out last week. It did. Oh boy, PlayStation servers were having some fun, weren't oh, they? Yeah, weren't they've, they? they've been up and down a lot. Apparently the um, concurrent player count is something like 1.2 million people. Oh my god. Which is like, that's a lot. Of, I mean, uh, PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds just clocked like a million concurrents like the other day and that was a big achievement. Destiny just swings in, uh, that's swoops crazy, in. I, uh, clearly, in, in completely coming from completely the, the wrong place here, uh -huh. I thought that there was less buzz around Destiny 2 it than there was that Destiny way. 1. I know. There's it, fewer people talking. There's loads of advertising, but it feels like there are fewer people talking. That was totally my feel as well. Because um, yeah, it came out like last Wednesday, and uh, like I picked it up because we didn't get um, like a copy sent over straight away, and I was like, I want to be on this. I need to have yeah. a, a hot take, mm -hmm. so I went and picked it up. And yeah, like it just kind of felt like it was just there. It didn't because the first game was obviously like the next game from the Bun from Bungie, the Halo creators. It's gonna be this huge deal. Yeah. And I think with Destiny 2, I think they needed to kind of course correct a lot of their marketing in general and a lot of their like approach to it. Mm -hmm. And so I think they just released this thing and just go like, if it works, then it'll build itself up. It'll have its own reputation, and it's worked. I mean, the yeah. game's like is pretty damn good. Well. We'll, we'll get to the things it does well and it doesn't do well. But yeah. Before we go anywhere. Such a luck pipe. Score. What are you thinking? No, I, I was just saying to you before, that like, scoring Destiny 2 is the weirdest thing because I, I really like it, but in very many ways it feels like trying to put a score on like a slot machine or something. Right. Because it's just like, well, it's really satisfying and you pull the lever and the things spin and you go, that looks really good. Oh, I won. Cool. And you go, I'll do it again. But that is all you do. Yeah. And so it's like, there's a lot of like, a lot of bells and whistles and mechanisms and like fancy stuff around that core feeling of like, you know, in, in Destiny's case, shooting stuff. Yes. And it feels incredible. Mm -hmm. But when you step back and you go, but what am I, what have I actually accomplished? What, what am I actually doing here? It is just a series of systems revolving around how good it feels to shoot a in the face right so I do in many ways people will be like well it's a five star game because it uh, objectively it does all those things very well you can shoot men in the face you can your heart's content yeah and there's a lot of men to shoot and so that stuff works really well I think I'd have to knock a star off because of like some of the really insidious like nefarious business um, things that are in there like the microtransactions and yeah. the way they kind of encourage you to buy microtransactions to like um, to get like the, the end game stuff. oh well that stuff's in there yeah I mean that, yeah that, that's in there as well we, we can break these things down because there are there are a few things in here that are a little bit just oh Activision did you okay. have to they've even some of the ones they've taken a step back from where they were before in the first one um, yeah I'm going to give Destiny 2 four stars um, okay. but I think if you really love first person shooter combat this is the best first person shooter combat I've ever played and I've played a lot oh, wow. of first person shooters well, uh, it just so happens that the, the mechanics around it are very you can see right through them if you if you have any sort of like if you've grown up around video games and you've seen the industry become increasingly more money focused yep. and mobile game influenced this is the, the mecca of that it's the culmination of all those systems and yeah all you're really doing is shooting dudes right. but it feels amazing when you shoot dudes so I'm going four stars and then we can uh, we'll break down why I guess I take a star off at some point okay all right well first oh. off let's talk about how it feels to play you're saying that it that it feels pretty bloody amazing oh, it's, it's gorgeous I enjoyed playing destiny one mm -hmm. like that felt good to play mm -hmm. What makes this one so much better? In this one, they've just kind of rolled together all the different, like the the way, like you, you talk about games and you talk about gameplay loops. It's like, what is the loop of a different game? Like maybe you're going to a place, unlocking a chest and going somewhere else and shooting a guy and going back to the hub to cash in some things. Mini boss, move on. Yeah, mini boss, move on. They they have all these different, like smaller gameplay loops that all kind of interconnect. Like uh, the way that Destiny 2 rolls that stuff together is by giving you like just a map that you can just bring up and be like, right, it's Ubisoft style. It's like, bring up a map. Mm -hmm. There are 10 objectives I need to do. Here's like six loot caves that I can plunder and get stuff. There there are some loot boxes to go seek out. There's a bunch of like you know, high value targets to do. There's a mission. You can do all those things can overlap. So like you might right. go to a place and start shooting dudes and it'll pop up and be like, oh, there's a public event nearby. And you'll see other players like running to this like checkpoint. You can run over there, activate that, take part in that for a bit. Mm -hmm. um, then, you know, like go down a loot cave and get some loot and you're upgrading your character the whole time. It's extremely engaging. Like I said, right. you're just pulling that lever over and over again. And it's like, this feels great. There's always stuff to do. There's always stuff to do. And like every time you shoot a guy, they just explode in like a fireworks display of like, like ammo packs and like you know armor and weapons and stuff yeah. and you're always upgrading it does mean that um, there's like a weird transience to everything that you like equip mm -hmm. because nothing matters really right. like because you're just going to upgrade you're just going to upgrade it in five minutes anyway yeah. and, and that loop they've they've um, decreased the difficulty from destiny one so there's there's hardly any bullet sponge enemies everything gets taken out really fast right. um, even the, the mini bosses take a bit longer but most of the like grunt enemies you'll just just tear through yeah and so like uh, it's really satisfying obviously they want you to get that rush mm -hmm. that sweet rush that's the only reason people care about destiny is that rush that you get when you play it right um but yeah they've basically taken destiny's one destiny one's various like 
components and just strung them together so you're always doing something. It's always popping up going, hey, do you want to go kill three of them? Go do that, right? Here's some loot. Do you want to go down there? Get, get good, good, some more stuff. Keep yeah. pulling the lever for the love of God. Feels good. But there's not that, you know. Is there a reason to stick around other than to upgrade the loot every two minutes? Because <laughs> story was a big thing from yes. Destiny 1. It's all in the Grimoire cards. Don't worry about it, guys. They've, okay, so they've the got rid of all that stuff, thank God. Yeah. Um, so all that stuff is now in the game. Uh, they basically have uh, mission types called Adventures, um, which are very lore-heavy, narration-heavy um, little, just go alongside the main missions, like little side quests. And um, they also have patrols. And like I say, you're hunting down high-value targets. All of those come with way more narration and way more lore backstory than before. Mm -hmm. The main ones are the Adventures ones because yeah. um, you'll pick them and someone like Cade or uh, Akora or uh, Zavala or whatever will all tell you about that enemy or like like you said that you came across like a fallen banner and your and ghost oh was like oh my god yeah the, the point where I stopped playing I did actually I went to I did finish the game mm -hmm. and I got to level 20 it's when I hit the light levels I was like what is going on <laughs> I gave up they got that. rid of that too but when I was on the moon and it was Dinklebot at that point yep. before it changed to Nolan, Mr. North Nolan Bot mm -hmm. um, and he just goes hmm that's a fallen house banner. And I was like, what the f***? What the f does that mean? <laughs> yeah. What is this exposition? It, it's meaningless. So there's, like, give me a reason to be here. Yeah, there's, they, okay, so they do a much better job of setting the world up in, D, in D2, in Destiny 2. Yeah. Um, I honestly think if you just, just forget Destiny 1 ever happened and just come in with this one, um, because the whole point of the reason that you're sticking around is because you're a guardian, you're powered by the light, which comes from the traveler, travels, travelers, this intergalactic space being that, yeah. you know, imbues you with this like ethereal power. Yeah. Go out and fight the darkness. The darkness manifests in a whole bunch of different races, um, like alien races, just just do your part, you know, just like with a bunch of friends, do a bit of solo, go shoot some dudes and slowly cleanse the galaxy of evil. That is destiny. Okay. And so that is what you're doing. That's the pull. Right. And it's like, and again, it all filters back into like, just shoot dudes. That's all you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, the story though, um, the mission that we did in the beta, I remember that one with like that big... Yeah, the big ship thing. Yeah, the big ship thing and the big evil dude called Gaul. Right, um, so Kind of, he was like a big yeah. dude. He's the main villain. Oh yeah. Um, that basically that opening mission is the most Halo style, like the most exposition that you get. Oh, sorry, the most like set piece heavy mission that you do, okay. apart from um, like towards the end. But the majority of the story is is very very like basically structured, like um, like say like the original Halo games. They were very like they would pepper missions with like different weapon loadouts, so they'd give you a vehicle and a good variety of vehicles too. Like maybe there'd be like aerial drones or whatever, okay. uh, aerial ships and stuff. All that stuff gave you some variety. Whereas Destiny's campaign, like you you can blow through it in about eight to ten hours. Yeah. And and, um, and there's not that much variety to it in terms of what you're actually doing. Like again, right. it's shooting stuff. You do get some vehicles, but it's very few and far between. Running through so in terms of like shooting stuff, holding square to make your ghost interact yeah. with something, and then... they they have toned down the hold square thing. Sometimes okay. you just press it. Oh, but I know. Oh. But most uh, you do do a lot of that though. Right. Uh, and that's the thing. If you again, if you take a step back, which God forbid, if you actually analyze this, you know, take a step back. A lot of the mission structures in, in Destiny 2, like the story, it is go here, defend this place, go over here, hold square, mm -hmm. go over here, talk to this person. Yeah. Um, it doesn't have that sort of like just inherent gameplay mechanic, right, mechanical variety that the Halo games had, Yeah. Um, which I think is a miss because like Destiny 2 still does have like a tank section, a couple of tank sections or like, you know, go get your bike or whatever and like fly through this uh, this section a bit faster than you were before. Mm -hmm. But that stuff is so few and far between. And I think it's a huge missed opportunity. Um, okay. But the cutscenes in the setup, at least it, at least it frames its world better at least right. it gives you a reason and an emotive like a motivation to like take out goal and then do your part kind of thing to be a guardian fighting for the light is it weird that there is no import character option from the first Destiny? there is there is yes Ooh, okay, tell me about that they're, okay so the, that's one of the coolest things that they do because when the game first boots up um you you know you you can pick your character or whatever and uh, and it shows you like milestones that you've accomplished on the first game so for me that it told me about the time that i i fought the black garden or whatever i forgot the name of, you know nothing can make sense in destiny none of the names who cares fallen house banner yeah <laughs> yeah they're all fallen house banners of yeah, some yeah. description mm -hmm. uh there was a boss thing in the first one called the black garden or it was fought in a black garden whatever yeah. when the game starts it gives you this like really cool it like hand-drawn type image and it says you did this back in 2014 with like these players oh. and remember this remember the time you cared and it's yeah. like there you go and so like it's because for me I have all the DLC but I haven't finished it so right. apparently if you the more milestones that you hit on that original game the longer your opening your introductory okay. welcome back cutscene will be yeah mine was just the end of the first game's campaign um, but I've seen people have like all the DLC has nods and it's like oh you defeated like X boss that's at the end of Rise yeah. of Iron or Taken King or whatever outside of that you've got like um, 
it just pops up with your character. The only thing that doesn't carry over is loot. They had to do a really hard reset on loot, otherwise I guess it would never have made sense. Yeah, people would just absolutely yeah. demolish the game. But like, you do get, it does the illustrative thing, and then it just drops okay. you into the character pick thing, and your character's just there. That's awesome. So that's handy. But I didn't know that. I thought I thought they there was some furor leading up to the release where they were saying, yeah, no, you're not going to... It was just the loot. It was just because they just had the to loot. sort okay. of wipe the slate clean with all the equipment and everything. Like, nothing carries over other than the, the look, the aesthetic. Okay, so um, that one goes down and everything. Yeah, but my guy looked like a weird demonic girl anyway, so I just kind of... Which you think would be good. Let's just start again. Let's yeah, just let's start just again. Grab that let's, let's just do that again. Yeah. Talk to me about, is it called Patrol? The one where mm -hmm. you're just out and about in the wild? Yeah. Because I loved that. But, okay. oh my God, those missions came up again and again yeah. and again and again. Is it like that? Where are you patrolling this time? Uh, so, okay, so yeah, there are four locations in total. Another one of them is Earth. None of the locations in the first one carry over, thank like, again, thankfully. Oh, we're not it's... going to Russia anymore? No. Rusty, it's... rusty old Russia. <laughs> I think you go to a place called, like, Vostok or something, but I, I forget, but it, okay. there's a bunch of, like, Earth locations. But, yeah, you basically have these giant open worlds that are on each planet. Yeah. And, uh, and then over the course of the story, they get way more filled in with different things to do. Like, for the most, for the first, like, eight to ten hours of Destiny, all you'll be doing, or you, all you can do, is the Crucible, the online multiplayer or the yep. story uh, you can do advent the adventures in between them and you can loot caves yep. but you don't have uh, strikes and you don't have patrols and um, you get them later because the whole setup of death of the story is you're on the yeah. back foot kind of like XCOM 2 style you're sort of like getting your crew back together yep. so as you do that they unlock more missions so patrols you do for Cade so um, once okay. you get Cade 6 back like he then starts like giving you patrols to do and they're way more varied and nice and they're just punchier than they were in Destiny 1 okay. like one was like go get like 10 dusk light shards or whatever like bright shards or how it was called they are, they are those random currencies yeah 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 and it was like go scour this open world and just find these items and you never could like or not fast enough anyway and um, the patrols in uh, 2 are all like it might just be like defend this outpost for a bit go find this high value target mm -hmm. like uh, you know like there's a roving pike gang pikes are like the bikes in the game okay. and like there's a roving pike gang go grab a pike and kill 10 of them when you're on the back of the bike like it's just they're just little you things like that from the bike oh hell yeah oh cool you could do that in the dlc for destiny one oh. but that was in like the late like the later dlc okay um so you know there's, so there's stuff like that like yeah like as you like that's the thing with the weird sort of progression they've got is you need to finish the story to even get the full package kind of thing right um and it's weird because considering where destiny one left off it had so many like plugins and like all this dlc was just like pushed into it yeah like the the version of destiny one at the end of that game was just so feature complete or had so much stuff to it yeah that if you're then jumping at destiny 2 so a lot of people are like, and where the hell is the content? Reintroducing it later on. Yeah. Bizarre, yeah, because a lot of people I know absolutely love the Crucible. The, I love the Crucible. versus multiplayer. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people will be wanting to go straight into that. Mm -hmm. And strikes obviously were a huge thing as well. And yeah, yeah. clearly, you know, you need to be leveled up to, to, to actually tackle any strikes. Yeah, properly. you don't actually you don't actually unlock them until later in the story. But like once you've done that, some of them are gated behind like instead of a light level, it's a power level, which is just like right. like a cumulative score based on all your other armor and like weapon abilities and stuff. It just gives you like okay. a score. It's good, it works. Do you think there's gonna be any frustration for people who wanna just come straight in and do strikes with their mates and stuff that they've got to go through a load of story yes. first? Yeah, because yeah, yeah. they can't they can't do anything. Right. They could um, they could join they could do the crucible multiplayer together. Um, or they could do like they could try and match up to do story stuff, okay. um, but yeah, they can't. They don't. Actually, they won't actually have access to strike straight away. Um, they'll have to get through a few things. Okay. Um, but they could join up and do some patrols and like like you know journey around together. You can still do a multiplayer if yeah, you want to like still join do up. The story together, right? You yeah, yeah. Like and uh, you've only got to get through. I think it's like mission seven or eight when strikes unlock um, okay. out of like sixteen. Um, but yeah, so so there's that stuff. We should talk about the comedy because I think. I don't know how much of that was in the beta, or how much you've seen. I've, I've seen Cade 6, and I've seen people who think Cade 6 is really funny, and I... He's just not, is he, though? No, he's really? not. He's not funny. It's not. <laughs> it's like, let's put a quirky character in. Um, I saw... Uh, um, I don't know about him. I can't think which... where Because I've, I've been on a lot of forums, they're getting the general read on Destiny 2. Yes. And I saw someone talk about how they've... It really feels like Bungie have, like... They haven't necessarily course-corrected as over-corrected on the sterile, grim nature of Destiny 1. Right. No, because, no humour, no yeah, liberty, nothing. Like, ev everything now, like, every character all the time is quipping, one linering like, monologue, like, just doing little... Really, like, try-hard, toothless humour. Well, that was unexpected. Well, yeah, just stuff like that, and it's like... <laughs> yeah, like, hey? And it's just like, you don't... I, I, I read this online that they've kind of gone like, well, we have access to the biggest potential first-person shooter franchise on the planet. We should make it accessible to everybody. Right. And so they've kind of got... It's the... It's, so they're Disneying you know, it. Or like what Marvel do. Like, yeah. yeah, it's like, let's just have these these jokes in here. But they're everywhere. And it's like it's like jokes designed by committee. It kind of goes back to the whole, the general feel of Destiny 2 is that every part of it is designed by committee. It's like a perfect mobile app. Mm -hmm. And it's just like every part of it just feels like this mechanical 
you know, there's hardly any like real artistry to it. Yeah. Um, and so like it, it's weird because if that was a movie, you'd be like, well, that's a, you know, it would be like a Transformers movie. You'd be like, oh, well, that's a completely soulless product. Mm -hmm. That doesn't really work. But in in a game, you have to have good gameplay mechanics, and they do come through, right. which is what stops it from being so. Awful. It's almost like they've written a load of jokes and then they've just just threw them, them all in into the game. Yeah. To see where they land. And it's like Nathan Fillion is a brilliantly a brilliant comedic actor yeah. with fantastic timing, and like he should have he should either he should have been given more agency into the story, sorry, into the script, or or he was just told like just do a bunch of just improvise, just do something. Mm -hmm. um, nearly every single one of the, not even, sorry, hardly any of those jokes land. Right. Like it's very rare that something in Destiny Two is genuinely like humorous, Does insightful, he come and come off as more annoying than before? yeah, way more like, annoying. Oh, God, I gotta go and I I, Kate now. I like want to like him and like I want to like those characters, but it, it's just. Every, it's just everything, every time anything happens, he has to then say something, or even if he's done his own little speech, he has to be like, huh, do you know what I mean? Huh, get it, yeah. right, okay. And it's like, he, I just don't know who the hell that's written for. I don't know who actually watches that and goes, <laughs> oh, that guy, he's, oh, okay, he's yeah. a card. Okay. It's like, it's just, yeah, th that stuff is a little bit, not necessarily too much, because it's not overbearing, it's just constant. Um, is so that, that where it loses your your star there? My star is the, 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 <laughs> the reason that I would, it's not a perfect game, it's just because it, you can feel that sense of it playing you. You can feel that sense of it. Like I said, everyone knows if they walk into a casino that they're going to be gambling and they're going to be taking part in something that is designed to take advantage of them. Yeah. And I think you can see that in Destiny. It's okay. not to say that it doesn't feel great, but like you said about the shaders, um, they now have shaders that don't apply to a whole armor set. You, it's it's five different things, and so like you need to then you need to then acquire the same color randomly five times or like buy it. And so like when you hit level 20, you then have a character called Tess something, yeah. who the only way to get more loot after you uh, finish the level, because you're not gonna unlock, unlock any more ability points and stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, you, you might do, but like, basically you have these things called Bright Engrams, and they give you one every time you hit another level past the level cap. When okay. you go to um, trade them in to, to this particular character, she offers you like three microtransactions, like five quid, 10 quid, and 15 or whatever it is. Yeah. And she's like, hey, this thing will decode if you buy one of these other ones. That's horrible. Yeah. But you, when you actually do get given a bright engram, she will decrypt it without any additional funds. Okay. But the way that that menu is set up, if you talk to her, she's just offering you this thing, going like, "Oh, do you want the bright engram? Give me five quid." Yeah. And it's like, people, it's just so. Might do that. Yeah, it's just so on the surface of like, give us more money, like pay to get this stuff because you can pay for silver, which then gets you like more abilities and stuff in the game. Right. Or like more equipment in the game, and the, the shader stuff is really nefarious. Like all they, they just. And they walked it back because shaders in Destiny One, you could apply to all of you. Mm -hmm. But now it's I, like I thought you know. the, in The Witcher Three, Blood and Wine, mm -hmm. they introduced the. Did, the did, was it for that DLC they introduced the yeah, guy yeah, the different for armor the, colors. yeah, but for different parts of your armor. Yeah. it wasn't just a. That was a pain in the ass <laughs> coming across one. Of, so I was walking around like some kind of Harlequin with like yeah. different colors. All over the place. <laughs> and, and now this one's hidden behind a paywall. If you want to definitely yeah, get it. Yeah, but the, right the problem with that is that the shaders, the armor colors, are things that drop in random engrams or in you just hope for the best and it's. Like, well, right, so you're paying for something you don't even know what it is. Yeah, and, right. that, and obviously that's that's a larger conversation that needs to be had on like maybe like a legal level as to all these gambling mechanics that are now inherently in video games. Like you're yeah. paying to, to roll a dice on a random box of loot. Mm -hmm. That's a gambling mechanic. Yeah. We don't seem to address that in games, but that's what that is. Yeah. And so like, yeah, within that you, you get like a random armor color, but you need to roll that five times. You might get an armor color that has like a number three or a four next to it. It means it can be used like three or four times. Yeah. But that still won't be all of your guardian. That might be your weapon color, your legs and your chest. And then you'd be like, but I want the rest of you to be blue. And then you've got to go do it again. Yeah. And you might not even get the same color. Yeah. And so it's systems like that where you just kind of go like, I see what you've done. And and I, I see you, Destiny. I see you trying to do this. Mm -hmm. And and I and it's a... It just, it makes it just, you see right through it, it makes you see it for what it is. It's insidious. Isn't yeah, it? it's, it's kind insidious of insidious. Design. Um, and, it, and that kind of like, is compounded by the fact that, you know, Destiny 2 as a product is very much Destiny 1. Everything Destiny 1 was meant to be, mm -hmm. that the menus are exactly the same, you know, the general feel of motion and movement is nigh on exactly the same, minus the new subclasses and the new like, powers that you have. Right. You're still leveling up in the same way, um, and you're still, you know, crunching your gear, feeding it into other gear, like, you're doing a lot of the same stuff you did in Destiny 1. I just have to assume that Activision are banking on the fact that not everybody played Destiny 1 because of all the reputation that it had. Right. And so they're trying to make this mass market product that is like, you know, lots of lighthearted humor, lots of like low difficulty, like mm -hmm. just watch the fireworks pop off, just keep getting the loot, just keep going, just keep going. It feels great. It, 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 it is really fun. But I, like I said, if you've got any sort of like storied knowledge of gaming over the years, you mm -hmm. see exactly what they're trying to do and exactly what this is, right. which is a slot machine. 
Well, there we go. Four <laughs> stars from yes. uh, Scott Scott Culture over here. Let yeah. us know how you're finding it. Are you are you balls deep in Destiny Two at this point? Are you thinking about? Getting I mean, I it? am. Are you? Are you? Yeah. How is it? It's great. It feels great. Okay. Cool. I just I wrote a sparrow. You wrote a sparrow. I did. I thought. What was the pike thing? Pikes are the enemy bikes. Oh, okay, they're not called sparrows. No, you do get a sparrow. Even though in Destiny 1 they gave you one at the start, you don't unlock those till the end of the story. Yeah, I saw a guide come up on, on my Twitter that said how to get a sparrow. I was like, oh, all right, they've changed that. Yeah, there's a lot of just remixing stuff from the first game in the DLC to sort of give it a progression. Oh, okay. Well, Fun, though. Let us know how you're finding Destiny 2 in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I've been Ben from World Culture Gaming. I've been Scott from World Culture Gaming. And we'll see you soon.